So component two, section A, is the largest part of the second A-level film studies exam. It's worth 40 marks and should take you an hour to complete. Now it's important that you don't spend uh, too long on this question. There are two films to talk about and um, there's a lot to say and it can be quite easy to um, sort of get caught up in it and um, write too much. Remember you've only got half an hour per film um, so you really need to choose what points you want to make well and stick to your timings. It's absolutely crucial that you don't go over time um, you know, sort of so early on in the, um, in the exam. So this section requires you to discuss two films from a list of films set by the exam board. Um, I'm going to be basing this guidance on Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth and Damien Sifron's um, Wild Tales. The first thing I really want to emphasise is the importance of knowing your focus films well. You should know them inside out and have watched them multiple times. If you haven't, watch them again. Do it as part of your revision. You know, there's worse ways to spend an hour and a half or a couple of hours than watching these films. They are entertaining and they're um, very well made, um, but they're also your key texts, so you need to know them. So the specialist study area. Um, whilst all the other sections you'll need to study on the Film Studies A level have their own um, focus areas, their own what they call specialist study areas, this one does not. It's the only section uh, across both exams which is entirely based on the core areas. So this means that the questions that you'll have to respond to uh, will be based on how the key elements create effect and meaning. Um, so you might be given a specific key element to discuss or maybe a choice between them or it could be um, a couple of different key elements, something like how a um, sort of visual elements, so that would include cinematography and mise-en-scene. Um, we don't know, obviously, part of the exam is not knowing what's going to come up, so you need to study them all. Um, you might be given a specific area of meaning to discuss, such as um, representations of um, a specific group of people, um, maybe gender, ethnicity or age. Or it might ask you about the context, how did the context relate to the theme or, or something, or the aesthetic qualities. It stands to reason, therefore, that you'll need to have a solid grasp of what the key elements are, how they can be used, and the correct term terminology to use when discussing them. Uh, you might want to refer to previous revision materials for this, but remember the key elements are cinematography, the way the camera is used, shot types, camera movement, composition, uh, mise-en-scene, the physical things in the shot, what is included, what's excluded, the props, costumes, settings, sound, both diegetic and non-diegetic sound. Remember diegetic sound is from within the world of the film and non-diegetic is outside of it like um, soundtrack or voiceover or narration. Editing, the selection and arrangement of footage to create a sequence. Um, but also consider the pace of the edit, uh, the focus of the edit, and how shots and sequences are linked together through maybe transitions or the juxtapositions between shots or, uh, or sequences. Um, all of those are aspects of editing. And performance, the creative choices the actor makes in order to tell the audience more about the character. Remember, this isn't what they say and do uh, so much as how they say and do it. It's the choices that the actor has made, not what's in the script. Um, so that's what we'll be looking at for performance. The important thing to remember here regarding the key elements is that they are merely tools that the filmmakers have at their disposal in order to create effect and meaning. So whilst understanding and being able to, to describe how the key elements have been used is a great start, it's crucial that you put your focus on to how they are used to create effect and meaning. So there are a few different areas of effect and meaning you might discuss and which ones you focus on will depend entirely on the sequence you've chosen to analyse. With that said, however, you should always try to dig deeper into the meaning 
And what I mean by that is that it's easy to say that a particular sequence or um, scene um, uh, creates suspense or tension, or that it tells us that a character is good or bad or it's supposed to be scary. But those are really quite basic points. They're, they're, they're correct and they're a decent starting point. Um, it's not like you're going to lose marks for including them, but there are so much stronger points that you can use and sort of areas that you can focus on which are going to net you more marks and show the examiner that you really sort of get this film and you really understand how it's been put together and, and why it's been put together in that way. So it's, it, it's that that you want to focus on here. Always sort of dig deeper. But I've broken the areas down in like the areas of um, effect and meaning down into easier to remember groups. Um, starting with the most basic genre and narrative. So you don't want to spend much time talking about this as these are the more obvious points. Um, it might provide a nice way to introduce a sequence or film um, talking about you know maybe in Pan's Labyrinth the fact that the Pale Man scene for example is quite um, fantastical and horrific uh, more so than sort of probably any other part of the film. You know, it's a, it's a decent start and it's a, it's a good to weigh in to the more uh, in-depth analysis but you don't want to dwell on it too much character and setting um, what do we learn about the characters um, or the place that it's, it's set in again it's quite easy to get bogged down in simple points here so do be careful about what you choose uh, to include in your response aesthetic qualities this is the look and feel of the sequence, uh, what I sometimes refer to as the emotional tone. Uh, make, sure that, make sure that you mention aesthetic qualities as the examiners will be looking out for it and it's an important part of how the film affects the spectator um, through the aesthetics. Um, even if you're not sort of asked a, a question specifically about aesthetic qualities, um, in most questions that you get you can bring it in and I think it would be a good idea to do so. So consider feelings that the sequence creates and how it does that through the key elements. Um, that's often predominantly mise-en-scene and sound, but all the elements work together to create meaning and that's gonna depend on what sequence you're looking at. Representation. Uh, this is a very strong area to mine for high marks. Here you're thinking about how different groups of people or places are portrayed by the film. Um, make sure that you mention it in your response. So it could be in relation to how gender is represented or different age groups, ethnicities or nationalities. And again, it will be dependent on the sequence as to which you focus on. But do make sure that you are considering representation if you're looking at just sort of general effect and meaning. Uh, you could get a question that asks you specifically about it, but again, regardless of that, um, it's definitely worth um, touching on this. Uh, and similarly for contexts. Um, by contexts we mean the circumstances, time and place around the film's production. These always have an impact on the film. Um, films aren't made in a vacuum, they're made in a time and place by a certain sort of person, group of people and it's going to reflect all those things in various ways. So the higher achieving students will be able to discuss how aspects of the um, sequence in hand reflect the various contexts of the film. Um, these aren't likely to be things you can just pick up from, from watching the film um, alone. These things which you need to know a bit of background about the film. Um, for so make sure that you if you're not certain about that background if there's stuff that you don't know or you have no idea about um, then you can have a look at the um, the individual videos that I'm going to have on this channel for it or the powerpoints which go along with those videos or the notes that you took during that lesson um, so I've got some tips to help you achieve the highest marks in this um, section Number one, obviously, as I keep saying, know your films well. It really is the most crucial aspect of any of these units, but on this section in particular, you need to know your key sequences in forensic detail. Watch them over and over again until you know them off by heart. Be 
an expert on these particular sequences. Two, answer the question asked. If you're asked to talk about visual elements, make sure you only discuss visual elements, uh, such as cinematography and mise-en-scene. If you're asked to discuss how key elements construct representations, be certain to focus entirely on representations. It's easy to panic and start sort of veering off topic when writing these responses. And there's always a temptation to try and uh, load in everything that you've learned about a particular thing. But you're only going to get marks for answering the question and for making points um, which directly um, address what you've been asked. So please make sure that you do that. Three. Use key sequences to base your response around. Don't use the whole film. Um, it's fine to have some introductory um, content where you're talking about what the whole film does, and, you know, what sort of representations it creates or something. But for your, um, for your detail, you need to be basing your answer on key sequences. Um, that's very short individual parts of the film. Um, it's important to have an understanding and strong knowledge of the film as a whole, as I say, but you'll only attain those higher bands by picking out those really sort of individual, specific uses of a um, key element, like a, a specific use of a camera shot. We don't want to talk about generalities. Four, use specific examples, as I've just said. Um, don't speak about generalities. Identify a specific individual camera shots, aspects of mise-en-scene, uses of sound, whatever it is. Just be detailed and specific. And five, incorporate subject-specific terminology as much as possible. Don't shoehorn it in or use it where it's not appropriate. Try to use it organically. Um, and naturally, but don't miss a chance to use the terminology associated with any of the key elements. Uh, not only does it help you meet the success criteria for the higher bands, but if you get into the habit of using the right terminology when discussing these um, ideas and these topics, it will naturally raise the overall level of your response because you'll be focusing on the correct things. Don't be afraid of unfamiliar words or terms. Um, get to know them and get comfortable with using them yourself. So for structure, you need to talk about two films in this section. You've got an hour to write your response, so it would seem obvious to simply cut this in two. Spend half an hour on each film. Remember, there's no need to compare the films in this section. There's no need to sort of draw any sort of parallels between them. You can almost treat the two halves of this response as two separate essays. For each film, follow a similar structure where you begin by giving an overview of the film and how it relates to the question. Um, that's sort of your big picture answer. And from there, you can go into more detail on your key sequences and give specific detailed examples, as I've already described. You don't need to follow a complex structure, but make sure you have an overall plan for your response in terms of the points you'll be making and be certain to give yourself enough time to discuss both films equally.